Well, hi there students, it's Mr. Verzat. Today we're going to look at a very basic digital painting method that I call the quick and dirty painting method, or Q&D method for short. This method of painting mainly functions as a rapid way to generate something that has form, volume, texture, and color just to communicate the idea or to pass it down to a 3D modeler or the next guy in the production chain. So let's get started. This is one of my tutorials that you can find on our class website. It's also called Aaron's Design Class and it's a Google website. So the quick and dirty method, I kind of call it that because its purpose is to be very quick and dirty. If you need to get something turned around that reads clearly and gets the idea across, but you don't have a very large amount of time to paint, um, then this is a great way to just bang out like three or four different creatures you know, in one eight hour work period. So it's broken down into three steps. Step number one is start with line art. Step number two, paint in a silhouette and then light the form. And then step three would be cleaning where you add details, texture overlays to give photo, micro photo details to it, and then presentation elements. Start with a clean line drawing and have enough information in the line drawing to communicate form, texture, curvature of form, just enough so like you could pass this on to another artist and they wouldn't have to interpret or guess with your work. As always with most of my other digital paintings, I start with a mid-tone gray for the entire canvas background. That keeps your eyes from going blind, keeps you from getting tension headaches. It also gives you a nice middle range for you to start painting your lights and darks. It helps you find contrast in your image more effectively. After that, manually paint in a silhouette with a hard-edged brush. Make sure that your silhouette goes right up to the edges of the line art. And in this method, your line art is going to stay in the render because it's going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting for keeping the forms and the values legible. Now one thing to do with your line art is I typically set it to multiply mode and then lock it. I keep it at the very top of the layer order and then paint underneath it. In multiply mode, it allows everything to be see-through uh, in the layer especially if you scanned it in on white paper first into the computer. You know, that way you don't have to delete all the white. You can just make all the white see through by setting it to multiply. And then locked keeps you from painting on it. Silhouette underneath and then a gray background. Next, hit it with a spotlight effect. And what you do is I just command click my silhouette layer. And what that does is it makes a silhouette uh, selection around all of it like a big mask. And then in a new layer, just paint a gradient. So on the undersides, it'll be darker, lighter up on top. And that gives kind of a spotlight effect because this thing will be lit from above since it's floating on the surface of the water. Now you could also do some other cool things. I mean, underlight it, you could do that too. Now in a new layer, just do a lighting pass and you can use any form of brush for that. Just give it a solid one, two, three read and then bounce light, make sure that uh, I wouldn't worry too much about ambient occlusion or contact shadows or creases and folds at this point. Let's save that for detailing. And then zoom way out, and if it reads at a distance, then you've got a solid lighting strategy. Next, I do the occasional color splash. So in a different layer with a soft edge brush, I might find some areas that might be fleshy tones and then add kind of uh, different colors to it, playing with your different blending modes. For example, overlay is a great way to add color while preserving all of the different values underneath. Once we get to the final third area of this technique, drop in some photo textures. So these are different leaves and you can see that uh, by setting the blending mode to either soft light or overlay, you can have the values that you painted work with some of the details that are present in the photograph and, that, and you use the warp tool. That's a free transform warp. You can also use the liquify tool and stretch copy, clone, paste parts of those textures in, and you end up with something generally like this. Dodge and burn tools can add some brights and some darks, though they can blow out your color. Here I added a few presentation details, just some uh, gradient on the surface of the water, and some of the you know rippling effects here. We focus on adding presentation to everything, so um, this could be like verbal notations, a texture on the background, um, little light and particle effects, nonverbal notations to show how things work. 
and even like a copy of some silhouette studies on the bottom to show maybe how that idea transferred over. Now this was a demo for my students in class and the objective was to create a space alien hunter that's derived mainly from creepy cave spiders. And so we started out with those restrictions in place and generated an entire thumbnail silhouette series just to communicate the overall action. I've got a couple of them that I'm going to show you guys and so after looking through them I decided to go with this one where it was kind of nubby legged and stood on you know the ground and such and then would reach up and grab and pull things into its mouth. Now this little creepy guy right here, I also have him worked up at kind of an in-between stage of production just to show you guys the methods uh, that I use at least. So I grabbed that janky little scribbly silhouette and I blew it up really large on the canvas because line art needs a high resolution in order to read without the lines looking all you know, stair-stepped. So the thing that you'll notice about the line art is that it doesn't match the silhouette perfectly. For example, I added more mass to the legs down below. The purpose of the silhouette is just to get you to your main idea, and the line art is where the real designing and the fun comes. I have a video showing how silhouette design works, and in general how extracting line art works, so I encourage you guys to watch that. In general what you're doing is you're taking your line drawing techniques and you're looking at clouds in a sense. You're looking at the strange complexities of the silhouette and let, just letting your brain go on autopilot and try to extract different types of forms that are interesting. And so I kind of went for something that looks similar to, say, football contact shoulders and such, the padding that football players wear. In general, the amount of detail that you want on your line art should be enough to communicate, like, curvature of form, what kind of materials, in general, what the different anatomy pieces are. It should stand on its own, just in case you had to pass this on to another guy down the chain. I usually turn my line art down a little ways. and then paint in a masking silhouette. You do this just with a hard edge brush and you bring the silhouette colors right up to the edge of the line drawing. The purpose of this is it really helps you create what's called a selection. You could command click the thumbnail and it makes these marching little ants and it allows you to paint inside of the silhouette without going outside of the lines. It also helps you extract this figure out if you want to put it in an environment someplace. The color that I chose was uh, just kind of a neutral tan color, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can shift the color as you'd like, like maybe more towards the yellowish green, or you could go to Image, Adjustments, Color Balance, which is Command B, and it gives you more control over how you adjust the colors of your silhouette. What we want is something that's dark and desaturated that allows us to paint our light and have it show, and then also allows us to paint you know, some of our shadows and have them show as well. And up against a great background, it really helps you see those values. The next thing I do is I make a selection, and in a brand new layer, I just put a spotlight gradient in here. That kind of pre-lights the image. Again, we're thinking quick and dirty here, so it's the occasional color splash. So I just blocked in a couple little cool shadow colors, some yellowy type light up above some pink tones for the flesh, and then reds for the uh, different body parts. But the technical part comes next, the lighting pass. So you choose a color of light, and because I think that this thing's gonna be kind of subterranean, I used a cool kind of cyan color. All you do is you paint where the ones, the twos, and the threes are with a one, two, three read. Feel free to look at any other videos that I have on that, or review Scott Robertson's books, How to Render, and how to draw on how that technique works. Once the light's in place, in a separate layer, do a core shadow pass, and then do a bounce light pass in a separate layer. It's kind of hard to see this on YouTube, I bet, but this is kind of a reddish color. I spend some time detailing after that just to clean up, uh, for example, where the joints are, how the eye sockets work, the little rims and little nubbies. Occasionally, if you see some areas that are a little bit too dim, I might add another pass of light on top of that. Adjust little creases and folds. You could call these contact shadows. Another word for this is ambient occlusion. Anywhere where two sur surfaces meet, usually light gets trapped in there. And at this point, it's pretty janky. It's pretty ugly. But uh, we just want a good value range in place so that it reads from 10 feet away, and here if we zoom way out to, its, to where it's about the size of a postage stamp, 
you know, so far, so good. So for my textures, I just used some photos of different crustaceans, and I cut out parts of them, stuck the photographs on here. You can shift and warp the textures like this to kind of bend them around the surface of you know, the forms here. You want the textures to kind of conform to the surface values of your creature that you made. And your textures don't have to be the same kind of material. They might be like the rusty side of the fuselage of an airplane, but that rusty bumpiness might resemble what the exoskeleton of this creature might look like. And so you can find textures in the most interesting of places. An atmosphere pass to just kind of do a, a little push on some of the values that are farther away from us. So we've got two legs that are close and some legs that are far away. I, choo I chose a color of atmosphere that matched the color of bounce light. In this case, it was uh, the color red, kind of this pinkish color. And I just apply that to areas that are farther away. So even these little feelers in the center of the torso, uh, some of those are pushed farther back than others. A photo noise pass, that's where you apply film grain. It's a post-processing effect. You can find that in one of my YouTube videos where I go over the basic digital painting process. And what it does is it makes kind of a cinematic film grain effect, and it really gels some of the paint together. Um, final, final step is to add some presentation elements. So a ground shadow, this is just manually painted. So having the contact points on the ground and the shadow cast on the ground, and then maybe just a little framing gradient here uh, going from dark to light in order to help the creature pop a little bit. All right, so here's another work in progress. Here is another one of those cave spiders that we looked at that silhouette series with. And so again, what I did is I took that little silhouette and I stretched it out and made it really big. And you're gonna find that probably, I don't know, maybe like 75% of what's here in the silhouette is going to be retained in the line art. And then another 25% of the design is gonna be added that's not present here. Remember, the purpose of the silhouette is just to get you to your main idea. It's the stepping point. And so here would be the line art that was extracted from this silhouette. So for example, I'm added an extra pair of appendages on the front that are used for gripping, several more uh, teeth, some really creepy crests on here, and in general, it's a lot of different sensory apparatuses that poke out. Really creepy little bugger. Just looking at the way that cave spiders creep people out, tried to recreate that in the legs. And in general, just trying to get curvature of form, indication of some anatomy line weight afterward to make it pop. I'm going to turn the opacity of the line down a little ways just so it doesn't overpower as I work and then uh, the next step from that is paint in a silhouette. Spotlight gradient hopefully that's visible on YouTube but I decided to underlight it this time so there's going to be light on the bottom and then um, just mostly mid-tone there. I chose, again, a cyan color, just because it's going to be in a cave area, and just applied a 1, 2, 3 read, just a very loose block in, using a hard-edged brush, um, playing with opacity on the brush. So maybe I had it down to maybe like a 20 or a 30, and I would block in, in general, the streak of the highlight, and then with a soft edge eraser, maybe fade it out, and then um, make another pass with that same low opacity brush, and those values would start to stack on each other. After that, you could do a core pass. So try to find the areas where there'd be no light. So this would be the one. Midtone would be the tan color, that'd be the two. And then the three would be where the core shadow is gonna be at. And again, this is block in, very rough, very loose. And this layer right here, you can hardly probably see any difference. This is where I'm starting to clean now. That's where I'm taking these big janky strokes and starting to work them in with what's happening with the contours of the drawing itself. So not finished yet, this is as far as I've gotten, just doing this with my students as they're working. And as you can see, there's a lot left to do, especially up in here. Got to clean up a lot of these values. Um, there are no textures yet. Uh, there's no color variation yet, but those things will come. So I hope you guys found this helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care.